guys, it's Emily. Welcome everyone! On this video, I'll see a number of roadside attractions from Tallahassee to Orlando. But first, I wanted to show some more of the hotel I stayed in. The hallway has some unique decorations. Some faces painted on the wall, yellow ceilings, much different from other hotels. A big map in the elevator. Lots of plants in the breakfast area. It's very inviting. We have a very long drive ahead of us. Normally the drive from Tallahassee directly to Orlando is about four hours. However, we are stopping at a number of roadside attractions as we he head southeast through Florida. And now we have to head out. Lots to see between here and Orlando. Let's go. Parkway, which directly approaches the Florida State Capitol building. The tall building in the background is the current Capitol building. The smaller building in front is the historic Capitol building, which is now a museum and was constructed in 1845. Look at that beautiful Florida sky. Anyway, time to head east on Interstate 10 to my next destination. In the small town of Lloyd, Florida at the Sukana Lodge, I'm by this big guy that's seen better days. This is Johnny Donut Seed. He's a variation of Johnny Appleseed, except he's holding a donut, and he only has one arm. He's also sinking into the ground and has a lot of moss growing on him. The poor guy is definitely looking pretty rough. It would be great if he could be fixed up and get a new arm. Alright, time to head to my next destination. See you later, Johnny. Now a half an hour east, in the town of Greenville, Florida, with a population of 750 people. We're at the city park. It has a nice walking trail around the lake. This is Happy Hayes Park, named for the daughter of the founder of this town, E.J. Hayes. There's a sculpture in the distance I am here to see. You may recall my visit to Al Denny where Ray Charles was born. However, he spent most of his early childhood here in Greenville. This is a nice bronze sculpture of Ray Charles playing the piano with a big smile on his face. Except, it's not the full piano, just the keys from a piano. Redside America describes this as the Happy Ray Charles statue, and it really captured his love for musical entertainment. Ray Charles moved from Albany to Greenville when he was an infant, and lived there until the age of seven. This is a nice sculpture of Ray Charles. They do need to rebuild or remove this doctor. This marker describes Ray Charles' life, including his upbringing and his influences on many genres of music. He moved to Greenville when he was just one month old. He returned many times to this town which he affectionately called Greensville. Ray Charles passed away in 2004, and this sculpture was constructed and placed here in 2006.
Not far from the, se the center of town is the Ray Charles boyhood home. This is actually a reconstruction of his home. Along with a statue in 2006, that same year the town completed this reconstruction. His original house had no electricity or indoor plumbing. The house was open for tours by appointment in 2009. The current owner of the home keeps it in very good shape. To see the interior of the house, go to the Greenville City Hall and make an appointment. Okay, time to continue my journey south. Remember when Phineas and Ferb how they used to ask, Hey, where's Perry? Well, here we are. This is Perry, Florida. This looks like a lot of smaller towns in north and central Florida. Not really a town square, but more of a main street through town. Perry has a population of about 7,000 residents. And now we drive a long way south, he heading towards central Florida. This is US 98. We are traveling to several smaller cities about 60 to 90 minutes north of Tampa. I finally reached my next destination in Denellen. At the corner of Pennsylvania Avenue and Cedar Street, at what looks like an apartment complex is the statue of the Blues Brothers. The Blues Brothers was a 1980 movie starring John Belushi and Dan Aykroyd, reprising a recurring skit from Saturday Night Live. On the left is John Belushi's character, Jake Blues, and on the right is Dan Aykroyd's character, Elwood Blues. The Blues Brothers film incorporated many R&B artists, including Ray Charles. The film is not considered historically significant and is selected for preservation in the National Film Registry. Continuing through these small towns in the western part of central Florida, getting closer and closer to Tampa. At this GS Auto Sales and Towing features an interesting roadside attraction. Looks like a statue of King Kong is in front of this building. King Kong has these creamy light blue eyes, but has good oral hygiene with those bright white teeth. Also, this brick sidewalk surrounding him, almost as if they want people to take pictures of him. Also well designed so people can sit in his big hand as if they were being picked up like Fay Ray. Let's see how supposed to do this. Well, he moved. Now it's time for lunch, and we need some gas. Thankfully, thankfully in Central Florida, they have Wawa. Wawa? Wawa is a chain of hybrid gas stations, convenience stores, and small grocery stores famous for their hoagies. For lunch, we got a made-to-order Italian hoagie, which is a sub sandwich, a half a pretzel with hot cheese sauce, and a, some hummus and crackers, and a giant soda. US 98 has a lot of traffic down here, but this is my next stop, this GMC Strongman statue. I'm at Homosassa Springs, Florida. He's also known as the Patriotic Strongman with his red, white, and blue <coughs> trunks. He's at this GMC dealership along very busy US 98, and it's not just a busy thoroughfare but also under construction, probably a road widening project. The statue must have been here a while. He's got a mullet and, and that mustache that looks right out of the 1990s. He's also very muscled up, got an 8-pack going, and never forgets about leg day at the gym. Time for my next stop. 
The stretch of highway looks brand new and has six lanes. Much easier to navigate. Anyway, here's the next roadside attraction, this giant manatee. The manatee's name is Bubbles. He was placed here in 2002 and got his cute name in a contest. Looks like Bubbles has received a fresh coat of paint recently. He even has a few whiskers painted on, as well as some eyelashes around his eyes. Also, the blue platform has recently been painted. Bubbles is located at the Homosassa Springs State Park, well known for its manatee rehabilitation program. I would love to take a tour of this park someday and see some manatees. This looks like a beautiful state park. If you've ever been here, leave me a comment and let me know your thoughts. It's not a roadside attraction video without a pink elephant, and I found one at Sims Auto Sales in Inverness, Florida. What's unique about this elephant is the thin square eyeglasses and those eyes that are lit up. How cool is that? The owner spoke with us and he said that the elephant has been here for over 25 years, basically to advertise his business. He said that he has refused multiple offers to buy the pink elephant. It's a good advertisement tool and brings in business. He also said he's going to fix those eyeglasses. Those glowing eyes are awesome. Alright, moving on. Back on the road, I'm now approaching downtown Inverness. My sixth stop is in view directly ahead. This is a lovely work and play area, very busy on this perfect 70 degree sunny day. Ahead of us is the former Citrus County Courthouse. Inverness has a population of 7,500 people and is the county seat of Citrus County. Inverness calls themselves small town done right. Interesting color choice where the clocks are located. Looks like a metallic light blue color. Very distinctive and, and caught my eye as I drove here. But what's unique about this courthouse is that Elvis is here. He's up there looking out of one of the windows. This is a lovely work and play area surrounding the old courthouse. This is a nice mix of old and new Florida in a growing area which is about an hour north of Tampa. I like my visit here. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you very much. That impression was horrible. Now driving around, about to head to my next destination. Looks like more offices and shops over here. On the left is the historic Valerie Theater, which is now a culture center. On to my next stop. This guy has seen much better days. I'm at Spafford's Construction and Remodeling, just outside of Inverness on Highway 41. This is the concrete man of Citrus County. He's got a thick coat of moss and mildew, and upon closer inspection, he has little moss plants growing out of his nostrils. He lost both his hands about ten years ago. He used to be a statue of a fisherman. He held a fishing rod in his hands. He's on busy Highway 41, just as the highway shrinks to two lanes. Anyway, next destination. Now in the city of Brooksville, along this road is this gigantic brontosaurus. Let's pan over and check out his entire body and, oh, after his legs, his body is gone. What makes this even more bizarre is the owner of, of this half brontosaurus has decorated his, um, hole for Christmas. There are Christmas dolls at the opening here, a penguin, reindeer, also garland, and a Christmas star. There's a white Christmas tree, complete with, Chris with Christmas lights. This is... weird. Hey, and there's another hole over here. I can see the innards of this dinosaur. 
Looks like you can go all the way into the dinosaur's tail. Not sure that I'd want to. Swing around to the other side. I can see the Christmas tree from the inside of the dinosaur. Merry Christmas, everyone! Also, it looks like the Florida weather has taken a toll. You can see little points of light where the fiberglass has worn away, so the rain can now make its way inside the dinosaur. One more look inside the tail section. I wonder how many kids have crawled their way inside the tail. This is real, a really strange roadside attraction in Brooksville, not far from Interstate 75. Um, yeah. Some people decorate trees for Christmas, others decorate over the big hole where Brontosaurus's head used to be. Now heading south on Interstate 75, getting closer to Tampa, but we don't go all the way there today. In Dade City, I find a muffler man at this car repair shop. A very busy repair shop, and we were worried the repairman would tell us to go away. We were very quick with getting some video of this muffler man, who looks like he's holding an oversized wrench. This muffler man is the bearded variety, I think Paul Bunyan style. Know the sign text on the bottom, and mufflers. That would have been good for the muffler man to hold, a muffler. Okay. Let's get out of here before we're told to leave. There's some hills in this part of rural Florida. Not much rural Florida left in the central part of the state. I've reached the city of Plant City. Very popular for a specific fruit. They even have a festival celebrating that fruit. And, as you can see, they have even decorated their water tower as a strawberry. Plant City is in the Tampa metropolitan area with a fast growing population of about 40,000 people. Their famous strawberry festival is held from early to mid March each year. This is a great looking water tower decorated as a strawberry. Plant City and other cities in this area have their strawberry picking season from December to March. The good viewing point for this water tower is across the street from this church, and what looks like a, a city park is nearby. Now heading out, we're making our way east to our next set of stops, trying to make it before the sun goes down. Now in Lakeland, Florida, and on the right are the headquarters of Publix, a popular supermarket chain in the southeastern United States. In this neighborhood is what looks like a fire-breathing dragon partially buried in the ground. This is known as the Dixieland Dragon, or the Lawn Sea Serpent. It's made of lots of scrap metal. They made this dragon extra scary looking too. Look at those big sharp teeth. Only thing missing it is if it actually breathed fire like the one in Vandalia, Illinois. Many signs near the dragon asking people not to climb on the dragon, as that would cause damage to both the dragon and the person climbing this dragon. There are a lot of sharp edges. Now heading to the next destination, this place has been closed a while and started a restaurant empire. On busy Memorial Boulevard, still in Lakeland, I am at a long vacant building. It's not just any building though. This is the original Red Lobster. This location was the very first restaurant opened by what, by what is now Darden Restaurants in 1968. It's been a long time since those Cheddar Bay Biscuits have been served here. This is going to be reopened as a fishing store, a great location next to the lake. I think those plans may have fallen through. The sign has been completely taken down as well. 
There's a red lobster in Lakeland close to the mall. This is a great location for another restaurant, especially with a lake right behind it. I wonder if a Joe's Crab Shack or something similar would work here. Well, I visited a closed original restaurant location. Now it's time to head toward Orlando to see an open original restaurant location. I'm heading to the major tourist area of International Drive, where this restaurant chain, then owned by General Mills, opened its, its first location in December in 1982. It's still open and this is their second largest location. I'm at Olive Garden! This is probably the fastest growing restaurant chain in the 1980s and 1990s. This restaurant location is huge. The waitress said this is the second largest location. This is an excellent location by the Convention Center in the Universal Orlando Resort. The food here is very good, but the price is higher here due to the location. We also went here as a sort of celebration. My dad has surprised my mama and I with annual passes to Walt Disney World. And that's it for my very long day driving to many roadside attractions and landmarks in Florida. There's much more to see in Florida and Georgia, so stay tuned. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye! Dooby dooby doo bop, dooby dooby doo bop, Perry!